All right, welcome back. It's time for us to have a conversation. <laughs> this week, we are focusing on the north of Ghana, all right? And we are going to be discussing this morning heritage of the northern peoples, all right, of northern Ghana. Now, I have been joined by Sadiq Shahadu, who is a regional ambassador for indigenous communities at Art and Feminism. And uh, he's going to help us to get into this conversation. Sadiq, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. How it's are good you? to have you here. I'm very well, thank you. Nice. Now, um, let's let's uh, tell us a little bit if you can give us an overview of the groups of people, the different uh, tribes and communities that live in the northern part of Ghana. Okay. Good morning. Thank you to your listeners or what, uh, viewers. Um, so. For northern region, you know, we have uh, more than, it's not just one. We have mm. the three northern regions before yes. these um, new regions. And so we have the upper yeah. east and upper west, yeah. and then the northern region itself. But for the groups, um, it is difficult to tell because there are so many tribes or um, groups mm. in the northern region. We have around 30 or more, wow. depending on where, um, how you want to group them, because yeah. some of them, they have um, dialects that are very close to each other. Okay. To some extent, you consider them like one tribe, okay. but in real sense, they see themselves mm. as like different. Mm. And for the major ones, I, I would say we have the um, Dagombes, okay. the Mampusis, mm -hmm. the Nanumbes, the Gonjas, we have the Wala, the Sisala, mm. the uh, Bimobes, we have the Chokosi, the Konkombas, a whole lot of them. Okay. We have so many, um, <laughs> you know, tribes. So yeah. we we'll have to narrow it to yeah. maybe just a, a certain um, group, like the Moli Dagbani language. Okay. Mm. Okay. So let's look at the the prominent ones, or let me say, um, maybe by shape. How we how we, you know, categorize them? Would it be by size? No. So we have to look at where they came from. Okay. So um, with the we have a group called the Moli Dagbani group. Yeah. Okay. which is like um, a, a, a family of um, dialects, the Dagbani <coughs> dialect. There are around 16, okay. and some of them are even in Benin and Burkina Faso. Mm. So for those in Ghana, we I have the, the Dagombes, the Nanumbes, the Frafra, we have the Dagari and other sub-dialects. Um, okay. So for um, the Moli Dagbani, the core are four, okay. three, sorry. We have the Nanumbes, Nanumbes. the Dagombes, okay. and then the Mampusis. Okay. And the Moli Dagbani. And the Moli Dagbani. Dagbani. Yeah. Okay. okay. What other languages are there? So we have the Gonjes. Mm. The Gonjes, they have um, a tribe. Their history is like, um, like a, it's a Guan language. Okay. While the um, Moli Dagbani is a Gu language, mm. G-U-R okay. language. So for the Moli Dagbani, they, they were said to have migrated from like um, Lake Chad. Okay. I don't know if uh, this is the right time for me to give you a you can, history you, yes, of where that. they came from, how just they got to the north. Yeah. So they migrated from Lake Chad, mm. and then from Lake Chad they moved to um, the Zam Zamfara in northern Nigeria. Okay. They settled there briefly mm. before moving to the Mali Empire. So at Mali, the one who led this uh, movement was Tuaje. Okay. Tuaje uh, in Dagban, we call him uh, in English. We say the red, um, the red hunter. Okay. He was a very brave and powerful hunter. Mm. So he got to um, Mali and settled there, and was given a, a wife because mm. of his bravery. Okay. It, it was believed that um, there were there were series of like events, like wars around that period, where he supported to uh, help the um, those people conquer other people. And there was also a history about um, a very wild animal who was like tormenting people when they tried to fetch water from mm. their dam. So he was able to kill that um, animal, animal yeah. because he was brave and powerful. Mm. And he was awarded a wife. From <laughs> there, he had a son. And the son also gave birth to um, Bewa. I'm sure you've heard a oh, lot about the, Bewa. Yes. So the Nagbewa, mm. from that, that is where we'll get the Dagomba the Nanumba, the Mampusi, okay. and even the Mosi people. Okay. We know Mosi people are here in mm, Ghana, and mm. at the same time, they are in uh, Burkina Faso. Yes. So with the, from, let me just continue from the yeah, Bewa on. side. From Bewa, we had um, Shitobu. Shitobu, we have Tohagu, we have the Mantambo, and then we have um, Zirli. Okay. And then Yemtori was a lady. So amongst them, we had a lady, a lady. who was Yemtori. Okay. And she uh, founded the Moshi Kingdom. Okay. Yeah. So um, Tohagu founded the Mampusi, the Shitobu, 
founded the Dagumba, mm. and then Mantambu was the founder of the Nanumba uh, uh, kingdom. Okay. So these um, three kingdoms, we all know, uh, are one of the major, like some of the major um, groups you can find in mm. the northern region. And from there, we had um, other tribes that came in because of the language tree. Some of them are mm. even in Benin. The, the smallest among them is the Notri tribe in the, um, Benin. We also have one of the Muli language, Dagwan languages in Burkina Faso, like I said, that is the, the Moshi. The Moshi, people. yeah. Yeah. Okay. So looking at all of these, the, it's a very colorful spread of different tribes and traditions and all of that. For you, um, what, is it, what are some of the things that stand out when you talk about the legacy of the northern territories? What are some of the things that stand out for you in terms of their contribution to Ghana? Yes, so some of the things I, I, I can say is, um, you know, it is, um, many people believe that people from the north are aggressive, like they are uh, somehow like, when, when you are dealing with them, if you are not careful, you think maybe they are arrogant or something, okay. but it has this um, history of like, um, hunters and like war leaders okay so it made them like behave like that but mm. they are really um, one of the things i can see about the northern people mm. people from the northern region is their hospitality mm. they are very hostile i have food. lived in tamale uh -huh. for three years i lived in Tamale, and and i can testify to that I mean, nice yes 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 yeah. absolutely yeah, mm. yeah. okay mm. no continue yeah so mm. um with that i can say they are very hostile when it comes to like hospitable. dealing with people and when okay. you are working with them you can feel like they, are, they love people. Mm. Uh, so that's one of the key things I know about the not people from the northern Ghana. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now there's a story here um, we have on, uh, on, on, on our city newsroom, which says, uh, talk, refers to uh, Ghanaian Wikimedians create over 4,000 audio recordings of Dagbani words. Now, I know, I'm sure you know something about this. Tell yes. us a little bit about that. Okay. So... Um, I am one of the people who um, contributed to that, and I, I'm actually the co-founder of the group. And the Ghana Wikimedians is a group of young volunteers who work or strive to promote the use of the Ghana language and also to make it more accessible on the internet, just like we have. So we have the English Wikipedia. Even in Ghana, we have the Tree Wikipedia. Yeah. We have other local languages, Wikipedias. So for the Dagbani, our main focus is on the Moli Dagbani family mm. that is 16 languages mm. these 16 languages we are starting from the dagbani which is like more um known by people yeah so what we did was um we we're looking for a solution to like get people to know how to pronounce some of these uh, words and yeah. they were actually unique words mm. like words that are used on almost daily basis all these 400 words or 4,000 words were pulled from uh, digital dictionaries. Mm. We s went through the internet and searched for like Dagbani dictionaries okay. and were able to extract those words. Mm. And then we had some people from like the, um, one of the institutions in the North, like a language professional who, who was able to tell us how these words are spelled and how to pronounce them well. So we started by collecting the words, over 4,000 words, and then we arranged them and make sure they are all Dagban words. You know, most of these words come from other places. Yeah. You know, it's very common among most of the languages yeah. in Ghana where some words are very, like, well-known, but they are actually not from the uh, language mm. itself. So mm. we try to uh, extract all this and make sure that everything was in line with what we wanted. Yeah. Then we used an app called Spell for Wiki. It was uh, developed by a team in uh, India. Okay. We used that app to, like, record those voices so people can actually hear how those words are pronounced, are pronounced properly. They will yeah. be able to see how the words mm. are spelt. So that is um, what we did. And we're able to do this in just um, one month. Wow. We had a team of 22 people okay. who supported us with that. That's very impressive. Mm -hmm. Now, you were saying earlier on about how a lot of the languages are similar. Yeah. And that if you hear, if you can understand one language, Mm. you can easily pick up what somebody else from another place is saying because exactly. the language is similar. Give us some of those examples. Which, which languages do you find are similar to each other? So the Nanumba, mm. the, 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 but um, there's one thing I want to clarify on this um, yeah, sure. uh, show. 
we are not Dagombes, we are Dagbambes, like maybe Dagbana, if okay. you want to say. Okay, it. say it again. Say it Dag again. It's not Dagomba. Okay. It's Dagbana. Dagbana. Uh, okay. So it's not Dagbani. Okay. It's Dagbanli. Yeah. The language is Dagbanli. Dagbanli. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. And the people are D Dagbana. Dagbana. So if it's one person, Dagbamba. Okay. Dagbamba is a, like more than one. Okay. And one person is Dagbana. Okay. Not Dagomba or Dagombes. Okay. Dagbana. Dagbamba. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. So so where is this confusion coming from? Where how come people have referred to the people as Dagombes? So I want to believe. It's because of um, the colonization process we went through. Mm. Because uh, we tried to change it. When I started the um, movement, uh, like when we started this uh, Dagbani group, I had most of them asking me why we choose uh, Dagbani. Mm. In the, but wherever I go, I find Dagbani. So it is very difficult for us to change it now. But uh, it's just unfortunate. And I know other tribes may also face similar situations mm. like that. Mm. But, um, you know, the truth is that we are not Dagombes. Okay. We are Dagbamba. Okay. Yeah. So the word Dagomba represents what? So the da Dagomba as a word, what does it represent? So it's just um, a tribe. Okay, so it's, it's the name tribe. of the tribe. It's the na name of a tribe. But the people, if it's one person, is um, Dagbana. Dagbana. Uh -huh. And then if it's a, a group than, of people, it's Dagbamba. Then Dagbamba. Yeah. Okay, and the language is Dagbanli. 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 Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so now let's look at the similarities, the languages that are similar to each other. Yes. So the Dagbani or Dagbanli is similar to Nanunli, okay. is similar to Mampurli, is similar to Mbosi, is similar to Dagari, okay. is similar to Frafra, okay. to some extent, oh, Wala, Sisala, all these mm. people, when they speak, you'll be able to like pick up things in the, okay. pick some things from mm. what they say. You'll be able to understand almost everything. I see. So wow. that is the uniqueness of mm. the Moli Dagbani and even the people of Northern Ghana. And I also want to believe because we are living closer to each other, mm. we are able to like uh, form languages out of the yeah. smaller languages. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Now, um, let's look at uh, the Yendi area and um, the, the, the struggle that happened for the, for the, for, to get a new chief, mm -hmm. you know. How significant was that, the installment of the new chief for the entire community? It was very, very uh, important and it, it's like considered one of the historic moments mm. for us as Dagombes. I don't want to touch that much, but I want to talk about how chieftaincy or the, the whole thing Ante about the chieftaincy yes. Let's do that. was um, like started, how mm. it started and how people are, um, those who pray play like heroes mm. in that regards and even how women okay I, I i belong to a feminist organization and i like things mm. about women i like uh, female history mm. and how they contribute to the dagbani kingdom so, so there's one woman a very important woman um she's called gundo okay. gundona and she has we one thing we don't have um queen mothers or queens okay. we have female version of kings okay. or chiefs. Female chiefs. So yeah. the role that the Gundona plays is just like the Yana. Okay. So she's like the Yana of females. Okay. She holds the same power. She has the same authority. She has her own land. She also even skin other sub-chiefs. I see. And for the, um, the so with the, the, um, the male side, mm. we have three important uh, towns that one can go through before you become a paramount chief. So we mm. have the Karaga, we have the um, Savlugu, and then um, the other one, I've forgotten. Yeah, so there are three towns, Savlugu, okay. and then... Um, Karaga, Savlugu. Yeah, okay, and Mian. So we have Mian, Mian, Mian okay. the Karaga, and then the Savlugu. Okay. Mian, Karaga, Savlugu. And these are the people who can, like, they are potential paramount chiefs. Okay. Before you can become a paramount chief, you have to be one of these. Mm. Like you, you would have been a king for these uh, communities. These areas before. And yeah. the same thing applies to the female version. We have the Gundona, and then we have the. Um, um, there are two other people, the uh, Kakpao, and ad another one. If I remember the name, so they have similarities, mm. and they are all like on their own. Okay. They hold the same authority, mm. but it's just a female version of the yana yeah. uh, himself yeah okay now when you say she can skin other um chiefs, chiefs yeah so male chiefs mm. can be skinned by the gundona no but yes 
even with that lineage, there, I know there's a particular town that even though it belongs to female men, I, I am told can also uh, take over. Okay. So she mostly, most of the people that she is in skin are like female. Okay. They are female. We don't have thrones. We have skins. So I was going to go to that. Yeah. The word enskinment. Mm. Let's talk about the difference between enskinment and enstalment. Yes. So for the enstalment, I think it belongs to the people from the south, like yes. the Ashantis, yeah. very common. But for the north or the mm. Dagombes, mm. we do enskinment because... Um, Which is use, what? So... It, Animal skin. Okay. They sit on animal skin. They don't sit on thrones. Okay. They sit on animal skin, and it symbolizes authority. Mm. Yeah. So the that, same. Tell way, us about the significance of that. Is that is that part of the the hunter heritage of the the, the northern tribe? Yes. Okay. Yes. As I mentioned, our uh, very first person mm. who started in the fifth, uh, 11th century okay. was a hunter. So mm. he was known for these kind of things. That's where we picked that from. So if you, okay, so I'm assuming that if you sit on the skin of an animal, yeah. you're, you're, you're dis depicting and displaying authority yes. to conquer. Yes. You know, okay, yes. fantastic. All right, so let's talk about the architecture of um, the, the northern um, territories. If you look at all the, I mean, I've been to places like Bongo, um, the Tongo Hills, mm -hmm. um, you know, other places in the north. Um, you notice how the huts are designed yeah. and built. Why is the architecture that way? Is there, was there a history to that? Um, and it's because it's, it's significantly different from the architecture down south. Yeah. Yeah. So one, um, because of the location, mm. you know, savanna region, we have mostly grasses. Okay. And then, so you, you realize that most of these thatch houses, uh, uh, they use um, grasses, yes. thick grasses yes. to make them. We call, some of them, we call them bala mm. in our local language. Okay. They use um, some sharp, um, it looks like a knife, very, um, it has some sharp end that mm. they use to cut them. And they are able to use um, like um, thread mm. or um, other things to, to put tie them, them together, together, tie them together. Yeah. And they use the design of the architecture. Most of them are uh, like round, mm. they build in a very round form. And then the top looks like a pyramid. A cone, yeah. Uh, like a cone, mm. exactly. Mm. So this is very common. And it is because of where they are located, some of the resources that are available mm. to them. I'm sure it's one of the reasons why mm. they are all building their houses mm. in that regard. And if you know, those touch houses, I've, I've seen other places where people try to modernize them in the form of like a hotel or yeah. guest houses. They are very <laughs> cool. When you live in them, like yeah. it's like an AC that yeah. you are using. So, so uh, exactly. So I was, I was thinking about that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I understand now, um, if, if, I'm, if I'm wrong on this, architects would like to hear from you. Um, send us a WhatsApp message on our WhatsApp line, uh, 550 But one of the things that I learned about many years ago is that Round houses tend to be cooler yeah. than square houses. So maybe that's also part of the reason why, I mean, they discovered this, particularly looking at the savannah land up there, and of course, the near, nearness to the equator. Mm -hmm. So the temperatures uh, tend it's to be higher high. and all of that. Yeah. Um, but moving from there, talk to us about Larabanga Mosque. It's wow. a unique heritage that like Ghana has. Yes. Um, it stands out on the landscape of um, the north. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that in his, his, his history. Yeah, so the Laribanga Mox was built in the 14th century. And the architecture, if you look at it, also looks like a pyramid. Mm. And it was built by um, an Islamic scholar, also a trader from um, Saudi Arabia, according to history. Mm. So he traveled down there and settled. His name was Ayuba. Okay. And he settled there. At, if you know, there's another place called uh, the, the Larbanga Mystic Stone, if you've been yes. around Larbanga. Yes. So that was the, he settled at the Mystic Stone first, okay. and he had a dream. One, one night, he had a dream about um, he, um, like, it was God telling him to put up a mox okay. somewhere. Mm. And so when he woke up, he did not know where to start the um, building, so he took his um, uh, spear and threw the spear 
So he decided that wherever he will he find lands. the yeah. spear, that is where he will build the mocks. Okay. So when he threw the thing, and the next morning he started looking for it, he came and found it at where the Laribanga mocks is. And there was already mm -hmm. a design. Mystery, mystically, he had wow. a design already set up somehow to the foundation level. Interesting. So it was, that was the story. Mm. And he just continued from there. If you look at the sticks inside the mosque, yes. they, they were just to um, let him um, know where he stopped or where to continue or how oh, to... Oh, yes. I see. So he used that to determine like hmm. to, um, where he has ended yeah. the previous day and yeah. when... Um, where to continue yeah uh, so he used that to just wow, give the help the, when you the go to inside the mock it's very small mm. i went there just la uh, this month um we are in a new yeah last month i was mm. there last month and i i've been there several times mm. anytime i go around the north i try to go there it's very small but mm. according to the locals they say it doesn't really get full wow. <laughs> it's very small but many and, people come there to and play, it still and doesn't get it's full. just like that <laughs> and you can also see some baba three there yes that is the grave of the first person who started the building okay. so and there's also a very big quran in the mocks mm. uh, which they believed um, he brought from saudi arabia so okay. it's just like um, this is ayuba you're talking ayuba, about ayuba yeah okay. it's just like a mecca of the west of the, of, and okay. you know it's also one of the oldest in west africa yes. and the oldest in ghana mm. yeah so when he uh, before he died he instructed them that when he died they should bury him just by the at mosque. the back of the mosque. Okay. So, and he told them that when he is buried, something like that, the Baba tree will, will come out. Come out, okay. and then they should take care of it. Mm. Uh, so, when I asked, I was told that the locals most of the time like take the leaves and they use it for healing and other okay. stuff like that. All right, and the mystic stone too has its own is, uh, history. Mm. The right. stone lies on a very tiny um, rock. Hmm. And because of how people go there more, uh, like, and they try to play with it, they decided to put something to cover it. But okay. the original stone is it's very, very tiny, tiny and it looks really unique. Wow, fantastic. Thank you very much, Sadiq. Thank you so We've much. We've been speaking with Sadiq Shahadu, and uh, he is the regional ambassador for ind indigenous communities at Art and Feminism.